This is Leonard. Leonard is a mud skipper fish. From the front, mud skippers look a bit like a profile picture of a middle-aged divorced dad on Tinder, chillin' poolside in Cabo just had the guacamole hashtag spicy. However, Leonard is a very special fish. Da doink doink? Mud skippers are a fish that spend a portion of their day living out of the water. Most fish, if you take them out of the water, become a bit of a downer, and by that I mean dead. But Leonard isn't dead, because Leonard can breathe air. He can do this through his specialized skin and by gulping air into his mouth parts, which are lined with blood vessels very close to the surface. Getting around isn't easy. If your basic body plan is designed to do floaty floaty in the water, gravity can be a bit of a bitch. Our fish ancestors had bony muscular fins, fins that could evolve into strong limbs and elbows to help push against gravity as they crawled onto shore. Jerry, what is this footage? I'm talking about an ancient fish crawling out of the... Well, this isn't better. Yes, I can see she's crawling, Jerry, but she's a person. All right, well, that's a dead fish. But mudskippers come from a different evolutionary line of fish. Fish with floppier webbed fins. Excellent demonstrating, Leonard. The same line that led to the goldfish. And I'm not judging the goldfish. I know it's hard with the ping pong balls at the state fair and the toilet flushing, but you wouldn't really ask a goldfish to help you move apartments. But Mudskipper don't give a crap what line he's from. Mudskipper will use the parts he was given, with a few little modifications. Its pelvic fins on the bottom are fused to form a sort of suction cup. This allows them to hold on to surfaces and even climb. Imagine what you could climb if you had sticky nipples. For a casual stroll, the mud skipper employs a movement called crutching, which looks a little like trying to get to the remote after squat stay at the gym. It props itself up with its pelvic fins and then pulls itself forward with its pectoral fins, dragging its motionless tail behind. But if the going gets rough or it needs a bit of extra speed, the tail springs into action. It curls and digs in and helps propel the body forward. Whoa there, tiger. Sorry, I have to show you the leaping blenny. It's a different fish that uses a similar movement, but with a twist. And sometimes the twist gets a little out of control. <laughs> it just looks fun. <laughs> Having speed and good ups helps if you're a carnivore, which many mud skippers are. It's like he's smoking a little cigar. <laughs> yeah, see? But eating on land brings another challenge for the fish. Here. Try this. Lie down on your stomach in front of a chicken nugget. Now try and swallow that nugget without using your tongue. I can see you're not doing it. Well then don't start thinking about your tongue. Don't concentrate on the big fleshy slug-like thing filling up your mouth. In any case, the mud skipper doesn't have a tongue. So to swallow on land, the mud skipper seems to use water that it stores in its mouth parts as a kind of hydro tongue. It pushes water out of its mouth as it grabs its food, and then it kind of sucks it all back in. And the water helps transport the food back towards the tummy parts. Now, to prove that it was the water, they they did it again, but this time they put the food on, I quote, the center of always ultra normal plus sanitary pads. With the water absorbed, the food could not make its way back to the tum tum. And the mud skipper has an interesting story to tell his friends. Science. The mud skipper needs water. It is a fish after all, and it likes to be moist. Like that drip of sweat rolling down the small of your back into your butt crack because you decided to wear jeans on that hike sort of moist. Moist. Like testicles in a freezing pool, its eyeballs can retract into dermal cups that retain water to keep them moist. For protection and mating, the mud skipper digs burrows with its mouth, one of the bummers of not being able to use a shovel. They are very territorial animals. Sometimes a simple dorsal fin display is enough to ward off a trespasser. But other times... Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! Oh! When it's time to lay eggs, the male and female retreat into the burrow. The eggs are placed in an air-filled chamber because the surrounding water lacks oxygen. When it's hatching time, the male gulps the air out of the chamber. Submerged in water, the mudskipper babies can hatch and swim up and out of their hidey holes to the surface. Remember, just because you don't have the big bony muscly fins doesn't mean that you can't do incredible things with what you are given. That is how the mudskipper do. 
the doink doink? Just had first date with Karen. She's very assertive. Love it. She got us free dessert because her bloomin' onion wasn't cut right. Seems to know the manager. Hashtag hot. 